Hello and welcome to my long-awaited how to snipe video on Black Ops 4. I apologize for the slight delay, but obviously once the game dropped, I wanted to learn as much as I could about it. So I've been grinding this game for the past couple of weeks, learning about the snipers, just the game itself in general. And hopefully give myself a leg to stand on to sit here in front of you guys and give tips or tricks or anything like that to help you get better with a sniper rifle on Black Ops 4. So I've been spending a lot of time planning this, making sure I try and cover every single thing I can from every possible angle. So hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, please drop a like on this video. I'd really appreciate it. Drop me a comment as well. Let me know how I do. And if I've missed anything, get a little, you know, a little discussion going on in the comments. If you guys can help each other out and obviously share this around. If you've got maybe friends or family, I don't know why your family, maybe they want to snipe. Okay. Maybe they want to snipe on Black Ops 4 and they're struggling. So hopefully I can cover as many aspects of sniping on this game as I can and help as many people out as I can as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. Drop a like if you do. I've already said that. Let's just get into this, shall we? But before we get into anything, I do want to mention these three things. Okay. Because these three things, in my opinion, make this one of the most challenging Call of Duty's we've ever had to be consistent with and do well on with a sniper rifle. Number one is there's no aim assist or target assist or auto aim or whatever you guys want to call it on the sniper rifles on this game. On the SDM, which is the semi-auto, there is aim assist. On the Koshka, on the Paladin and the Outlaw, there is no aim assist. There is nothing helping you lock onto that target, nothing assisting you, nothing swaying your scope to make sure you lock onto that target. So at the time I'm making this video, there is no target assist on those three main bolt action sniper rifles. So point number two is probably one of the most important things I need to say today, okay? And that is centering is off center. So in previous Call of Duty, if you were hard aiming a bullseye, you lined it up perfectly right in the middle of your screen, and then you unscoped and scoped back in. As soon as your scope hits the screen, the bullseye would still be the center of your scope, all right? And then obviously it would sway, and lose that center, but if you scope out and then scope back in again, it would still be centered on that bullseye as soon as your scope hits. On Black Ops 4, they threw that out the window, okay? And if you line up that bullseye once again, right in the middle, and then unscope and scope back in, it is slightly off center every single time. If you look at your little guy in the corner, right, the gun is always moving. It doesn't really affect the gameplay that much, to be honest. The close range shots, the medium shots, the target is big enough that even that slight off center isn't really going to change anything. But the longer range shots, especially if you try to quick scope, you don't have much time to line it up. If you're slightly to the side of him or you miss it his head by a tiny bit, the off centering might work in your favor or work against you. So unfortunately, you can't counter that by trying to hold your breath as you're scoping in. It doesn't work on this game. So the only thing I figured out that does help is using stabilizer. Stabilizer is an attachment you can get on some of the sniper rifles. And once using this, it actually reduces the sway and actually reduces the sway out of the gun. So if you do center that bullseye once again and you scope in on that bullseye, it should be close, you know, not perfect, but close enough to the bullseye where it's a pretty accurate shot. And finally, point number three actually follows on nicely from point number two. Now they've actually added recoil to the sniper that moves the center point higher every single time. In previous Call of Duty is if you lined up your horizontal crosshairs on, on let's say a plank of wood okay and you fired your sniper rifle once the gun was done recoiling it would then you know level off back at that plank of wood. Those horizontal crosshairs would level up back where you started. On this game however if you level off those horizontal crosshairs at a plank of wood again and you fire your sniper rifle that horizontal crosshair that line I guess you would say is then higher okay. You fire that gun again it's higher again. If you're then shooting and you're moving and everything thin, you've got to be constantly pulling that down because every time you shoot, your gun starts aiming higher and higher and higher. So now we've got those three things out of the way, I want to quickly touch on the four sniper rifles we have in Black Ops 4. I'm going to have like a class setup later on in the video, but I need to talk about this now because there's so many attachments and things you can change to help make your gun better, okay? So, on this game, you have different snipers with different damage, which can be changed with high caliber, which increases the damage to certain parts of the body. Then you can have FMJ, which increases the damage through walls and through arms and stuff like that. Then you have snipers with different fire rate where you can have rapid fire to increase the fire rate. Then you have snipers with different ADS time. You can change that with the attachment quick draw. You just putting that sniper rifle on that class doesn't help you. You need to know what to add to the gun and I'll get into that later on. But I will list all of these in a specific order. So with ADS times, I'm going to show you which sniper is the slowest scoping speed, working our way down to the fastest scoping speed with and without attachments. So it kind of gives you an idea of what guns scoping quicker than others. Then we'll show on the screen the fire rate Obviously, Paladin is 
is going to be the slowest, but I want to go from the Paladin all the way down to the SDM and kind of show you what the fire rate is specifically showed us, and then what attachments like Rapid Fire can change that, and then we will end on the damage, which is the most powerful sniper with and without attachments on it. Like I said, FMJ, I think it's more of a statistical thing. I don't think it actually changes the damage in-game, apart from obviously through walls and through armor, but I'm going to list the damage from high to low with the sniper rifles using high caliber and without it. So the reason I showcased that so early on is because I want you to understand that, you know, using different snipers every other game or every game, swapping to this, swapping to that, is just not ideal. There's so many different things on this game we need to take into consideration. I just kind of have that mindset that every single session of Call of Duty you play, you should be using like the one gun. I would recommend that anyway. You don't have to, but it's hard to adjust to the different ADS times, to the different damage and all that kind of stuff. I still struggle to this day to do that. I'll be using the Paladin one game. I'll try and use the Outlaw the next. I'm aiming too low. I'm firing too slow. The gun has so much potential, but I'm so used to the mindset of the Paladin, the slow fire rate and the high damage that I can't adjust. So in regards to sniping on this game, there's four different shot types. The main shot types anyway. So you've got quick scoping, you've got hard scoping, you've got no scoping and drag scoping. So quick scoping is the idea that you don't really spend too much time downing your scope. Okay, so you get someone centered in the middle of your crosshairs, whatever you to call it, and then you scope down and by the time your scope hits the screen, you shoot. Okay, you don't do any work in the scope itself. There's also hard scoping, which I'm sure you all know what that is, where you stay in your scope a long period of time, you're lining up the shot, you may hold your breath, you know, you want to line it up, make sure you get that shot. No scoping with a sniper rifle is basically just a hip fire, just a very inaccurate hip fire, unless you have to operate a mod on the Koshka, which makes it incredible. But the overall idea of no scoping is just a quick hip fire, quick panic shot where there's someone close by and you don't have time to scope in. You just click shoot, hope for the best. And lastly, we have drag scoping. And drag scoping is basically where you haven't centered them, so they're not in the middle of your screen. So by the time you scope in, you either to the left or to the right, you probably drag scope, you know, up and down. You try to line them up, you're not quite there, you're to the right or to the left, you have to drag your scope across. This has been pretty common in previous Call of Duties, but it's very hard to do on this game, in my opinion, because with drag scoping previously, you had aim assist. So if you drag over someone, it slows down your scope, helps you lock onto them so you can shoot them. On this game, there's no aim assist, so drag scoping is very, very challenging, but it's still a very valuable shot type to have and to know how to kind of do that, because obviously not every time you're gonna be able to line them up, get them in the center. So following on from that nicely, we will talk about sensitivity and centering, okay? And in my opinion, I, I can't stress this enough, okay? You can't have good centering without a comfortable sensitivity. You're never gonna be able to center someone. You're never gonna be able to move from point A to point B to lock onto that target if your sensitivity is either too high or too low. So mastering that sensitivity, getting something that you feel comfortable with is the most important thing you can do, okay? In my opinion, starting off low and working your way up is the best way to do it. I'm actually on 9-9. Nine, nine. With the lack of aim assist, with the lack of target assist in your scope, you need to have something that you can control. And in my opinion, a 9-9 nine, nine is perfect for me. I feel comfortable in my scope to be able to drag over someone and know when to shoot. Outside of my scope, I have enough time to turn around and quick scope someone or move around the map and feel comfortable with it. Maybe play some bots, go into some private matches, work your way up those sensitivities, find something that you feel comfortable with and you can master the timing of, okay? You need to master the timing of how long you think it's going to take you to go from point A to looking over to point B, okay? And hopefully, once you've locked down that sensitivity, you will then realize centering, you know, getting someone in the middle of your crosshairs before you're scoping in, it just happens, you know, it's natural. I think a lot of people think that's kind of a challenge, you know, I don't have enough time to do that. The game's fast paced, it's too crazy, I can't do that. But if you have a natural sensitivity that you feel comfortable with, I promise you, okay, I promise you, you'll have enough time to be looking over there, to then hear a guy over there, to look and snap on him before you scope in. So as we're kind of talking about shot types and stuff like that, let's talk about jump shotting, okay? Jump shot, as you can tell by now, if you played the game a lot, is the new meta. A lot of people jump shot and a lot of people sliding, you know, using cover and stuff like that. It's crazy. The movement is insane on this game. It's a very challenging thing to kind of counter. And I think you need to learn how to do it yourself to learn how to play against it. A lot of people do jump around in the middle of nowhere just to kind of dodge bullets and stuff like that and throw off your opponent. And that is helpful in, in a lot of ways, but in reality, the main reason you want jump shot in is to use it behind cover. Cover is your best friend in this game, okay? A lot of people think the time to kill is slow, but if you have a sniper rifle and you're just a sitting duck in the middle of nowhere, if you miss one bullet, okay, you're dead. You need to use cover. You need to be smart. You need to be good with the movement. You need to be quick. You need to be getting away from different situations. And knowing how to jump shot just kind of makes it all better. So, in reality, though, jump shotting is very challenging if you have the default control with a default button layout. You have to take your thumb off the analog stick to click jump to then and put it back on and you're sacrificing aim even though you think that movement might be quite quick you've sacrificed those split seconds from holding the aim holding the angle to click jump to then go back on and kind of line up the guy again so it's a very challenging thing to do on a normal controller with a normal setup so with that being
being said, I want to talk about my specific loadout, the control I use, the settings I use, stuff like that, and then I'll recommend some others if this is not something that's uh, going to be an option for you. To start things off, I use a scuff gaming controller, and what's perfect about the scuff controllers is the little paddles on the back. Those paddles are kind of remapped to any of those buttons on the front face of your controller. And I think they can do any button, actually, but obviously, the main point I'm trying to get here, these paddles on the back are going to allow you to jump or slide or crouch or melee or whatever, whatever you want to do without taking that thumb off the analog stick. So the scuff gaming controller I use is the scuff PS4 impact, okay? And I have three paddles on the back. My left inner paddle is actually X, which means I can jump. So I jump shot with the left paddle and my outer right paddle is actually circle, which means I melee with that because I play tactical layout. If you don't know what that does, it basically swaps circle with R3 and R3 is where you press in your right analog stick. So I actually crouch and prone and stuff like that with my analog stick. And the inner right paddle is actually for square, which is reload or pick up items. And that's the reason I did it. I hated taking my thumb off the analog stick to pick things up in blackout. I decided to add another paddle because I always used to, giving me more control and freedom to keep that thumb on that analog stick and use, you know, these unused fingers at the back just to press paddles and press buttons. If you do like the scuff controllers, and this is a bit of a shameless plug, but feel free to head over to their website and use the code SPRAT on checkout. I've been working with them for years. They're an incredible company and I highly recommend them. There is also two button layouts in the game that allow you to change that jump button to a different button on the controller. So rather than being X, you can have bumper jumper, which changes it to the bumpers. And then you can have sticker move, which actually changes it to the R3. So there's a couple of options in game that allow you to use jump without taking your thumb off the analog stick. You can also hold the controller differently and play claw where you use your index finger to press the buttons, but that's a whole nother world. You can Google that, you can YouTube it. That's not something I've ever done, but I've heard it's pretty helpful. So now we've talked a little bit about jump shot in itself. Let's talk about how to counter people who jump shot because like I said, you need to know how to do that kind of thing because if you don't, playing someone like that, you don't know how they think. You need to read the situation and everything is situational on this game, okay? I can give you the best advice in the world, but if it doesn't work in that situation, it doesn't work in that scenario, then in reality, it's the worst advice I could have give you. So one thing I can say about this game, though, is we don't have to worry about drop shine, okay? At the moment, there's nothing really in the game to help with drop shine. I think there might be an attachment on a gun, or maybe there's a perk or something. But in reality, drop shine isn't really a part of the meta. What you do need to worry about, though, is people jump in and people slide in. Because they made the movement so fluid that you can jump shot into a slide, into a jump, and it's so hard for you to kind of keep control of where they're going. So because of that, you have to be quick to react. You know, if someone's jump shot a lot, you have to be quick to react, to flick your shot up, and make sure you don't shoot them in the toe, otherwise you're not going to get that one shot kill. But at the same time, you don't want to be predicting that that guy's going to jump because what if he slides? You have to pull your shot all the way back down. If you're playing a, a team that don't really jump shot a lot or slide a lot, then you're good. You know, all you have to worry about is the flinch that you get from being shot. And all you have to do for that is if you're getting shot a lot, if you feel like you're downing your scope a lot and you're getting flinched, you just have to pull that shot down as you get shot. Or you can kind of wait for that flinch to stop and kind of time it so by the time the scope does center back down again, you can take the shot. So they made it so crazy on this game that, yeah, it's going to be tough to hit that shot. So in terms of the jump shot and the sliding, there's a couple of ways in my eyes you can kind of counter that. Keep it a certain body part level on your line of sight, you know, the crosshairs or whatever. You want to keep this specific, you know, high torso area, this high chest area, the place to be. To be honest, I know that kind of seems obvious because you want to be aiming there anyway, but it's kind of keeping that level and keeping that consistent level every time you see someone. So if you're running up a hill, you need to keep that level there. If you're running down a hill or you're climbing something, keeping that high torso area as your centered point is going to be crucial if you're coming up against someone who's sliding a lot or you know or jumping a lot and at the same time the way I kind of counter jump shotting now is to jump shot back. In reality, if they're jump shotting, their gun's going to go higher. And if you're jump shotting, you're going to go higher. So if you keep your crosshairs level of that higher torso area, if you jump as well as they're jumping, it's going to stay there, okay? So you don't have to worry about shooting them in the toe. If you jump shot to counter their jump shot, then you're going to be hitting them where you're going to be aiming. So it's keeping that level, keeping that centered point on their chest, on their heart point, whatever it may be, to make sure if they do slide, you can bring it down a tiny bit, pop them in the head, usually how it goes. Or if they jump shot, you can pull it up a lot, you know, be quick with it, quick reactions. If you have a high sensitivity, that's going to help there. Or keeping it level, jump shotting with them and uh, hitting that chest shot. So because of the crazy fast movement, you know, the intense gameplay that you can get on this game, it's going to be very, very common and very likely that you come across someone who's already moving, who's running across the screen, who's sliding across the screen. And even though that guy's not even looking at you, that is a very challenging shot because you've already toned down your sensitivity, okay? So to try and lock on that guy who's already running, to try and lock on to his current location, and then obviously by the time you scope in, he's already ahead of that. You need to then pull your shot across and most of the time, 
you're not gonna catch him, okay? He's fast. Your sensitivity is most likely too low, so you need to learn how to lead your shot, okay? Leading your shot is basically picking a point ahead of that person that'll give you enough time to scope in and line up that shot, you know, keep it body level or whatever it may be, keeping that center point ahead of that guy so by the time your scope hits that screen, he's crossing over your path, crossing over your scope, and then you can just fire away, okay? You need to learn how to lead that shot, and that is just down to, like I said, knowing your sensitivity. It doesn't even need to be a person. You can just pick a point in front of that guy and think, all right, I want to lock on there because by the time I scope in and he gets to that point, I can fire away. Learn how to lead your shot is very important on this game. You don't want to be dragging after him. You don't want to be dragging across. You need to be able to lock on to a point in front of them, visualize where that person is going to be, and then hit that shot. So in regards to all the shot types I mentioned earlier, you know, we've got quick scoping, hard scoping, no scoping, drag scoping, even jump shotting, okay? You need to incorporate all of those into your play style, okay? There's a lot of inconsistency on this game with sniping, like I said, the off center, the flinch, you know, the kickback, everything. So sometimes you need to quick scope. Sometimes you need to hard scope. Maybe there's a guy at the back of the map and you just try to be fancy with it. Just make sure you get that kill, okay? Sometimes you need to no scope. And there might even be times where you're trying to wall peek someone and they've got cover on you or they've got the advantage and you don't have time to peek around the corner, center the guy and then scope in. So you have to drag scope. You have to start scoping in to the right of them and then pull the shot around the corner. Like there's so many situations where you're using every little shot type, building them all together, bringing a streak together is the perfect way to do it, okay? So, and to be honest, if there's a situation where you think, I'm probably gonna die here, try and get away, okay? There's nothing wrong with running away from that fight, healing up, and then going again, because with the manual heal on this game, it allows for so much more control over your health and your well-being, okay? You can get out of that fight, get full health straight away, and then re-peak it, okay? In previous cards, you're gonna be hurt, you're gonna be wounded for, you know, at least a few seconds, but in this game, still up, boom, got health again, I can challenge. So don't be afraid to run away, don't be afraid to get into cover to certain situations, back up with your team. Use that kind of knowledge of the spawns, which honestly, I was going to give tips on spawns, but there's not really <laughs> any spawns right now. The spawns are all over the place. It's crazy. But in reality, you know, the common knowledge of if your team are here, the enemy should be over there. You're welcome to back up to your team. You're welcome to find cover. There's so many situations to keep yourself alive on this game. There's nothing wrong with playing defensive some lives. There's nothing wrong with playing super aggressive some lives. Like, if you feel confident, then go for it. So just incorporate all those different things. Use every little thing you can to your potential and, um, that's going to help you get those streaks, get those clips, or whatever you're trying to get in terms of sniping gameplay on this game. Everybody's going to have their own play style. Everybody's going to have their own way of playing the game. I'll keep going back and healing and then challenging. Like, that's my play style. I'm aggressive. I'm fast-paced. But for some people, that isn't the way to go. Some people play a defensive. They're stronger. They're more accurate when they're slowing things down and going at their own pace. And that's what it's all about. Re-peeking on this game is, is death, okay? It is death, all right? If you peek out once, okay, and he shoots and he gets some bullets in it and then you get behind the cover you can still hear that guy shooting and shooting and shooting and in my head i'm like all right he's gonna run out of bullets here soon i'm gonna peek again and to this day i still can't time it okay i still re-peek and he's still spraying in previous call of duty's like world war ii i would re-peek a lot by jumping around the corner and i still think that's like a very viable option yes peeking around the corner is is one way to do it but if you want to jump around the corner maybe slide around the corner you need to figure those things out for yourself and a lot of people always give the advice is don't get caught sprinting okay don't sprint around the map a lot but after playing the game a lot and using the movement and using the sprinting and the slide and stuff like that I don't think it actually makes too much of a difference with a sniper rifle because there's no actual perk I don't think Gunco actually helps you bring your scope up quicker after sprinting if you click aim while you're sprinting it takes the same amount of time as you clicking aim when you're not sprinting yeah obviously you don't want to get caught sprinting anyway because it's just a terrible situation to be in you always want to be around cover or something like that but I don't think it does as much damage as it has on previous games first things first this is my paladin setup okay I love it it's my go-to I have high caliber one and two as the attachments. Primary gunfighter one there, so I can have a third attachment and I use sight loader, which kind of matches my crazy aggressive play style. I love to reload faster, which is what it does. It also changes like the reticle and the scope look. So if you see what I do here, took that off and now the scope looks a little different at the top. So that might help you. You might like that, you might not, but either way, I don't use it for that reason. I use it for the fast reload. You can also swap that for FMJ. FMJ is incredible on the Paladin and that's a good thing about this, okay? You can customize it to suit any certain map, any certain game type. It's incredible how much you can change it. The pistol, I don't use that much. I could take that off, okay? And then I might throw on the thermal. Now I've got the thermal on, I've got FMJ on, I'll use the recon specialist so I can see through walls with vision pulse and the radar and stuff like that. You know, so many little things that you can change on this game that makes it more enjoyable, suit certain play styles, suit certain game types, and I love that. So let's talk about the gear. I use the stim shot. It's so perfect for me. You can heal up while you're sprinting and sliding and move it around. It's incredible because otherwise the manual heal is very slow. You can't do it very often. 
so that's why I love having a stim. If you don't have an aggressive playstyle, you can use the acoustic sensor, which, you know, is, is all about listening and sound whoring, but at the same time, it's kind of like a sixth sense type of deal from Black Ops 3. Scavenger I have there because you don't really have many bullets with the Paladin or any of the snipers, really, or any of the guns, really. I feel like a lot of people run Scavenger, but if you have someone on your team, I think it's the Crash guy. He drops the ammo and gives you extra health, so if you have one of those guys on your team or you use that personally, you can take that off, okay? It doesn't really matter, but there's obviously Engineer, which can, you know, be pretty helpful. Flak Jacket and Tactical Mask, I would usually recommend to many people, but in reality, I don't die by grenades a lot and I don't get stunned a lot. The second perk here, in reality, nothing really affects sniping as a whole. Lightweight, you can be more aggressive, you're faster, stuff like that. You can use it for the grappling hook on the ruins so you don't take any fall damage. Gung Ho is good if you don't want to have like sight loader on, you can put on FMJ so you can still keep it like kind of aggressive with reloading and still be fast and sprint at the same time while reloading. So that might be a nice setup there. There's also a dexterity if you want to swap to your pistol faster, if you can climb faster, slide faster, all that stuff. So dexterity, that might be something as well you might look into. And then the third perk here, Ghost, does what it says on the tin there, you know, hiding from the UAV, Dead Silence, if you're all about sound horn and stuff like that, you can throw on that. So there's some good perks on this game and that's what I think, you know, you can customize it in any way you want. Don't just stick with what I use, might not match your playstyle. You might take what I said into consideration earlier with the off-centered center and you might think, oh, you know what, I'm going to throw on Stabilizer 1 and Stabilizer 2 because in reality, you don't really need high caliber 2. It's just nice to aim a little bit lower and to be confident with those one-shot kills. So you might have that on and then every time you center it, it's just perfectly straight. You've got no sway. In terms of the outlaw, I would highly recommend having high caliber on. It only does increase damage from the chest up, so you still have to aim pretty high, which is kind of unfortunate. Rapid fire, it's crazy how fast it fires with this. So I'd highly recommend having that on just to have it on. If it's there, you may as well. And then quick draw, your gun is going to scope in quicker. You're going to be able to fire faster. And there's no FMJ to counter anyone using shields. So if you run into someone using a shield on this game, you're going to have to aim for the head with this gun. There's also an operator mod that turns it into a three burst weapon, a three burst sniper rifle, kind of like the PO6 from Black Ops 3. So basically add the operator mod with bolt cylinder. Okay. And what that does, it fires three bullets at once rather than one. So you can get rid of high caliber. You don't need that. Rapid fire, I'd still recommend. Quick draw, I'd still recommend. Because it shoots three bullets at a time, if you don't have this on, it only shoots three times. Have hybrid mags on, which adds six more bullets, which is two more shots. So you get five shots rather than three. Now with the Koshka, I would recommend quick Quick draw. I wouldn't recommend quick draw too. I don't think it's needed. It is so fast. It is overkill in my opinion. But hey, if you want to use it, go ahead. But quick draw one, definitely high caliber. Always going to do it. If it's there, use it. You need to increase that damage. But the damage honestly isn't too bad on this gun. I enjoy it. And then FMJ or fast mags. I kind of, you know, I, I bounce between the two because FMJ is great if someone has a shield, okay? But then again, fast mags, I love reloading fast. I love being aggressive. So I kind of bounce between those two. And after using these snipers quite a bit, I'm pretty sure the Koshka with high caliber one and the Paladin with high caliber one don't need FMJ to one-shot people with armor. As long as you aim high enough, you should be able to one-shot the people who are using armor. If you don't aim high enough, I would recommend having FMJ on the Koshka and having that extra high caliber two on the Paladin. The operator mod on this gun is absolutely insane. I'm going to throw it on. It's called, what is it called? Strelok or something? And it increases or it's precision accuracy while entering ADS. As you're scoping in before, your gun would still be widespread. You know, the bullet would stay widespread until your scope hit the screen and then it would be centered, all right? But on this, on this operator mod, you can put on laser sight, okay? And as you're tapping the aim, your crosshairs start to shrink and that is where your bullet's going to go. So if you have laser sight one or two on and you just keep tapping, it's so broken, but you you can no scope like an absolute lord. So that's, a, you know, it's a bit of fun. I'm not going to use it and run around with it, but that's what that does. So I wanted to make sure that you understood that. And then finally, the SDM. Honestly, I don't treat this gun like a sniper rifle. I treat it like a tactical rifle. It's more like the auger, okay? So I had an optic. I have the dual zoom, but you could have holographic or whatever you feel like it. A high caliber, of course. High caliber only does increase damage to the head. This gun isn't a one shot to the head without it. What is that? It's not even a sniper. So, got off high caliber. Recommend FMJ. A bit of grip as well, just because, like I said, I'm not using it like a sniper. I'm using it like an AR. So, if you're working through the challenges and you're struggling, turn it into this. Turn it into an AR. Maybe even extend the mags. Maybe even stabilize it. So many different things you can use. But, yeah, we're not going to talk too much about that because there's so many other better snipers you can use. I just wanted to talk about it and let you know that don't just use this one. Customize it. You can't get away with just having the sniper like this anymore, okay? It's very challenging, especially with the Outlaw, especially especially with the Koshka. But now, we've covered the classes, we've covered the movement, we've covered jump shot, and we've covered the button layouts, the sensitivity, the shot types, the centering, all that good stuff. Hopefully, 
I've covered it in such detail that will help you out, even if it's the slightest bit of help. Even if I've helped you a tiny bit, I've achieved something with this video, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, drop a comment. I'd really appreciate it. If you think I've missed anything, drop me a comment as well. Let me know, and I'll either try to do like a follow-up video or, you know, discuss it in a different video, something like that, or drop me a tweet as well. But that's going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please show some love on the video. I'd really appreciate it. I put a lot of time into this, and hopefully it worked out. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all soon.